This is Senate Bill 5087. This bill removes capital punishment from the books and repeals several laws, such as this, that the courts have struck down as unconstitutional and outdated. Uh, I, as you know, I initiated a moratorium against the death penalty in Washington State in 2014. And uh, our rationale for that decision was affirmed by our Supreme Court decision in 2018 when they invalidated the death penalty statute. They made clear, and we know this to be true, that the penalty has been applied unequally and in a racially insensitive manner. Uh, let's be clear, by this act, we are ending the death penalty in the state of Washington, period. I want to thank all the people for decades have been working to try to move towards a fair system of justice in the state of Washington, particularly the Attorney General who requested this bill, Senator Peterson, Representative Orwall, for the companion bills to get this job done. Uh, this is a day to move forward for fairness in the state of Washington. With this, I'm signing this bill. And it's difficult to smile over such a serious issue, but let's try because we've had a step forward here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bob? Thank you. Bob gets this one. Thank you. Jamie gets this one. You guys get these two. Thank you so much. Thank you. Tina, thank you so much. Thank you for your work. Hello. Good day. Thank you. Good to see you, bud. Good to see you. Hey, nice to see you. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, House Bill 1051. This bill strengthens and updates statutes to reduce robocalls and telephone scams aimed at Washington residents. Many of these scam trick Washingtonians into providing personal passwords or making unnecessary electronic payments. This legislation will give the Attorney General's office more tools to enforce the law and hold scammers accountable for violating our statutes and consumer protection uh, under the Consumer Protection Act. The Attorney General, our excellent Attorney General Bob Ferguson, requested this bill, and I want to thank sponsor um, Levitt, Representative Levitt, for the great work. And with that, people are going to not be interrupted in their naps now. So let's we'll <laughs> smile for a second. Okay, right up there. One, two, and three. And again, one, two, and three. All right. Good. Thanks, Mark. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sleep well. Sleep well. This is a this is a pro napping this is a pro napping bill. We need that We'll see you this afternoon for another two. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, I just came by here. Hey, how are you doing, man? Good to see you. This is House Bill 1177. This creates the Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and People Cold Case Investigations Assistance Unit in the Attorney General's office. Investigators and staff from this office will offer their assistance to local law enforcement to solve cold case homicides and missing person cases, with a particular focus on communities that don't have sufficient resources to investigate cold cases. This legislation will ensure that indigenous victims of crime receive robust, thorough investigations and potential prosecution. The Attorney General's office requested this bill. I want to thank sponsor Representative Lakanoff and Senator Dingra for their work, and I'm looking forward to the success of this office. So let's smile for passage of a good bill here. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Governor. Thank you. Thank you for your leadership. We appreciate it. We're sorry that we have to have such a unit, but we do. But we do. But we do. We, it's but we do. Yeah. See you my friends. Okay, this is House Bill 1329. This stops utility companies from shutting off their water or electric service for unpaid customers when the area experiences a high heat event, which are becoming longer, more severe, and more frequent due to climate change. This bill is particularly important for low-income households and un underserved communities, which are more likely to be disconnected due to non-payment. Attorney General requested this great bill. I want to thank sponsor Representative 
Amena, who's really on a roll because just a couple of weeks ago she threw out the first pitch at the uh, Tacoma Rainier's right. opening game. There's a 95 mile an hour slider. Uh, this is a continuing uh, good pitch by her and Senator Wynn, who helped get this bill through. And happy to sign this most excellent bill. Here, let's smile for a second. And let us continue our effort to stop carbon pollution so we won't have these heat events, so we won't have to exercise this bill. Thanks for that. Congratulations. Thank you, Governor. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. Thanks, Governor. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Thanks, Governor. Yeah, thank you. Okay, this is a Senate Bill 5015. This reinstates the productivity board for the state. This program collects suggestions from state employees on how to improve state government, such as ways the state can save money. Discontinued during the Great Recession, the board celebrates the innovation and creativity of state employees while compensating them for great ideas and encourages more efficient government work. I want to thank the sponsor, Senator Fortunato, and in preparation for this today, I ask employees to offer their suggestions. I have one right now here from Jim Dahlquist from the Department of Efficiency. He says, please ask legislators to give shorter speeches. I'm just, uh... <laughs> <laughs> With that in mind, I appreciate the sense of humor that my legislative friends have. Here we go, one, two, and three. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Okay, Thank good you, luck. Right. We'll look forward to some good ideas. All right. All right. We'll see you guys later. You yeah, thanks a lot. My, my Jay, Kristen, my, nice to meet uh, you. This is Uriel, and I don't know what happened to that. Angela. 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 Hello, Angela. Jay, how are you? Thanks for being here. Thanks for getting these bills through. This Senate Bill 5066, it provides greater transparency into contracts that health care benefit managers and health insurance companies make. This allows the Office of the Insurance Commissioner to better regulate these service providers. However, I will veto the emergency clause in Section 2, which is not necessary. So the bill is just a little bit shortened, and I appreciate it. Okay. I appreciate Senator Short's leadership. <laughs> go, hold on, hold on, hold on, go. Oh, wait, we'll just do this hold one on. first. Yeah, here, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Sign up with the blue pen. Yep. Thank you very much. Let's smile for a second. One, two, and three. And then one, two. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Good Thank to see you. See you. Good Thank to see you. Say hello. Say hello down. Hi, Will. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm great. You've been riding? A little bit. We're getting back. This Senate Bill 5070, this better protects domestic violence victims who experience a non-fatal strangulation by increasing access to services and benefits that help them heal and holding perpetrators accountable for their horrific actions. This law will extend forensic examinations at no cost to these victims. Thanks to our nobles and everyone involved with this bill. All right, thank you. Thank you, guys. I'm going to get that to Senator Nolan. Thank you. Thank Good you. to see you. Thank Good you. To see you. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Nice to see you. How you been? Nice to see you, Governor. Yeah, and, Governor, we you. have a sane nurse here who does okay, amazing work. Terry Stewart. Okay. Thank you. Where do you practice? Harborview. Thanks for your work. Thank great, you. Great place. And another, someone, a prosecutor great. who works in the oh, yeah, Corey Schnitt. Hi, great. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Host, Russ Brown. I'm sorry? Russ Brown. Yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody do well. Everybody ready? Are we ready? Okay, ready, go. Thank you. This is Senate Bill 5082. This repeals the requirement for advisory votes for tax increase legislation to appear on ballots and replaces it with a 24-7 website for the public. I want to thank the sponsor, Senator Cooter and Representative Whalen, for reducing the unnecessary expense of this matter. And I'm going to sit down here because we do have a chair available for me. <laughs> oh. So let's smile here in this nice, well-padded chair. <laughs> Life's too short not to have fun. Doesn't have wheels, Governor. <laughs> That's why it's still here. <laughs> okay, thanks, everybody. All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you so much. Good to see you guys. Keep it up.
you. See you. Yeah. Nice to see you. Right. Good to see you, guys. Thanks, nice sir. You guys. Thank Thanks, Sam. Didn't see you. Thank you, Governor. Good for you. I'm right behind you. Thank you. Good for you. We got your back. <laughs> Good to you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Governor, Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Good morning, good morning. Ready whenever you are. This Senate Bill 5084, this helps. <laughs> this Senate Bill 5084, it helps business communities stabilize their contribution rates to their injured employee accounts, which benefit workers. This bill also creates a separate self insurance account for the business, offering greater transparency in how those dollars get used. The Department of Labor and Industries requested this bill. I want to thank Senator Braun, Representative Cheney. And with that, Happy to sign this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to get that center bill. Yeah. Thank you, Governor. Hello, and can I introduce you to some of the Illinois please, staff? Please, who, yes. So these are. Okay. Uh, thank you. Mark Where's Phillips you? is, Mark, nice to meet you. is one of our Take actuaries. Of our okay. Bill Basic is our chief actuary. Oh, yeah. Nice to have some intelligence around here. Right. And <laughs> Tyler Langford is one of those uh, key staff who works in our retro. Well, we really appreciate uh, knowing that how numbers work. <laughs> Good morning. We're ready whenever you are, Governor. This Senate Bill 5131, this bill makes it easier for families to provide financial support to their incarcerated loved ones. It eliminates deductions so that an incarcerated person has more money available to buy food and beverages, personal hygiene products, writing materials, and health-related items from the prison commissary. This bill helps people who cannot get one of the limited jobs in prison and rely entirely on their families to pay for personal expenses. And I think this bill kind of recognizes that people have families who are not incarcerated that are part of this a very important loop. So I want to thank Senator Wilson and I'm signing this bill. All right, thank you. Good to see you. Jay, how are you? Nice to see you. Good to see you. Ready whenever you uh, this Senate Bill 5217, this allows the Department of Labor Industries to increase worker safety by regulating certain high-risk industries and employers, potentially lowering the risk of ergonomic-related injuries. The bill encourages a transparent and collaborative process to determine ergonomic regulations and supports the agency as it offers consultation and technical assistance to impacted industries. I want to thank Senator Dingra. I consider this a very important bill for people who are doing hard work. So let's smile for a second. Okay. Right here, one, two, one, three. And again. All right. Thanks, Marco. This Thank great. you. Good and deal. I wanted to make sure you, I okay. introduced you hey. to. You? Thank you very much. Thank you. How are you doing? Oh, yes. I'm good fine. Good to see you. Nice yeah. to see you, too. Nice to see you. This is a good bill. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Very important issue. I appreciate it. Yes, it's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you, it's fun. Okay. We got to make sure I get a. I'll, I'll get this picture to you. I'll sure we'll get this picture to you. This is Senate I'm so Bill. Glad you guys are here. <laughs> this is Senate Bill 5228. This offers people with behavioral health needs greater access to occupational therapists. These therapists help individuals succeed at daily living tasks, such as consistently taking medications and keeping up their personal hygiene. Expanding this access helps these individuals stay stable, often alleviating the need for them to be hospitalized. Thanks, Senator Dingra, for this very thoughtful and helpful bill. Here we go, one, two, three, and again, again. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Senator. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Keep it up. Governor. Keep it up. This is Trish Toole. She's the legislative awesome. director for the Washington Occupational Thank Therapy you. Association. Thank you very, very nice much. You. Yes. Thanks for taking care of so many people. Thank you. It makes a big difference in their lives. It really does. Thank you. We are ready whenever you are, Governor. This is. <laughs> This is, at long last, Senate Bill 5236 <laughs> is a collaborative effort that improves nurse safety, health care, worker safety, and patient care by establishing minimum staffing standards at hospitals and increasing hospital accountability. The bill also improves the Department of Labor Industries' ability to enforce meal breaks, rest breaks, and overtime requirements. This is a step toward addressing the nursing shortage in our state 
by giving nurses a stronger voice on hospital staffing committees with the intent to create a safer work environment, less burnout, and higher retention rates. Uh, I want to thank Senator Robinson for the stalwart and, and persistent leadership. I'm dedicating this bill to Mrs. Lemon. Uh, Mrs. Lemon was a nurse at uh, Riverton, or Riverview Hospital in Renton in 1961 when I'd broken my leg and was in the hospital for a few days. And there was a patient next to me who was a young man who had been burned when he had a, a pan of donuts being cooked uh, on him. It was terrible burns. And he was in a lot of pain, and he would call out for Mrs. Lemon 24-7. And in my memory, for days after day after day, she came 24 hours a day. And I'll never forget her. So Mrs. Lemon, wherever you are, thank you for your work. And I'm glad we're helping the tremendous nurses who were so fantastic during COVID. And I appreciate their efforts. So let's smile for all the nurses here. Also helps patients, too, I yes, might add. So. <laughs> all those details. You guys can find yes. Mrs. Lemon. Let me know. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. How are you? Ready whenever you this are. Senate Bill 5238. This expands current law so that student employees at Central Washington University, Eastern Washington University, Western Washington University, and the Evergreen State College can collectively bargain for greater worker protections. This includes teaching assistants, lab assistants, and student employees in tutoring centers. Thanks to Senator uh, Saldana, who is the prime sponsor, and the companion bill, Representative Fossey. And I'm very happy to sign this for uh, wildcats and eagles and vikings and gooey ducks. So. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you very much. Thank you so much. And these are our organizers. Thank you. Thank you, you. Thank you so work. much. We'll be back. back. <laughs> <laughs> and great yes. And we also want to thank <laughs> you. You know, we re realized you spoke at our recognition strike in, in 2002. Oh, yeah. This is Senate Bill 5286. This changes the formula that determines what each worker and employer in Washington contributes to the paid family and medical leave program. The new calculation is intended to create stability and help limit premium fluctuations from year to year. In the long run, a more stable rate helps Washingtonians know what to expect each pay period as we support workers when they need critical leave benefits. And I do want to add, this has been a fantastically successful program. I just am thrilled that we're leading the nation as one of the most effective and beneficial family policies in the country, and I congratulate everybody working on it. Thanks, Senator Robinson, for her great leadership, and our agency for rolling it out with great acumen. One, two, and three. And again, one, two, and three. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. You're welcome. This is Senate Bill 5331. It allows the Employment Security Department to customize unemployment insurance job search requirements to meet the unique needs of each person making an unemployment claim. This creates a more inclusive and effective approach to, uh, to job searching by removing the one-size-fits-all approach. The Employment Security Department requested this bill. I want to thank the department for their creativity in this regard and Senator Conway for helping get this bill through. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. you. Congratulations. Thanks for creativity. We appreciate it. Thank you. It's good to see you too. Congratulations. Senate Bill 5347. It allows treatment facilities to get more complete information about an individual's DUI history when the individual is referred for treatment. This will help treatment facilities improve evaluation and treatment by having the right paperwork at the right time. This bill also makes driving records more accessible to indigent residents by prohibiting court, courts from charging a fee when a person requests their driving record and cannot afford to pay. Thanks, Senator Wagner, and happy to sign this bill. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be well. I'll see you flying the cub.
Ready whenever you are, Governor. This is Senate Bill 5390. This authorizes the Department of Natural Resources to enter a safe harbor agreement with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to help conserve habitat for the northern spotted owl. This type of agreement would give forest landowners the choice to voluntarily grow habitat on their lands for this endangered species in exchange for the assurance that they can harvest the habitat when the agreement ends. Thanks, Senator Schumick, for this creative legislation. And let's smile for all the owls here. <laughs> all right, it's a very wise bill. Uh, <laughs> I'll thank you later. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Be well. Thank you. Good Okay, this is Senate Bill 5415. This improves the legal process for individuals in the criminal justice system who are committed under the not guilty by reason of insanity plea. As some of the most vulnerable patients, they can more effectively continue their treatment progress when they have access to proper legal representation. This bill also helps improve the state hospital efficiencies that will positively impact the wait times for the True Blood class members. I want to thank Senator Trudeau for this thoughtful legislation. So let's smile for a second. Thank you, Andrew. All right, thank you. Thanks, thank thanks you, Governor. Thank you. Appreciate you. Yes, can I get you on video scene? Yeah. You're happy. Anytime, anytime, anytime. 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 <laughs> I feel the same way. We are ready. This is Senate Bill 5452. This makes it easier to finance public biking and walking projects. Adding bicycle and pedestrian facilities to the projects, we can, uh, uh, by doing that, we can fund through impact fees, will help promote safety, clean air, accessibility, and improve transportation op options across the state. Thanks to sponsor Senator Shoemake, and thanks to Companion Bill sponsor, Representative Slatter. So we're looking forward to getting out on a ride after session. Bill 1, 2, Andrew, and again. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. thank you, Governor. Thank you. It's lovely to see you. Yeah, good to see you guys. Keep it up. Thank you so much. You know the mayor of Redmond? Keep, keep him spinning. Well, member. that's because one of our better biking uh, communities in the well, country. Well, you have to come visit this <laughs> Well, I'd like to ride. Yeah, <laughs> We have a central connector. We are ready whenever you are, Governor. This is Senate Bill 5453. It would make it a crime to perform female genital mutilation on a minor. This bill will provide these victims with new rights to sue a person who performed this procedure on them as a minor, regardless of whether the defense claims they performed or agreed to this action because of culture, religion, or ritual. In addition, the Department of Health will produce an education campaign to prevent future cases of this practice. I want to thank Senator Kaiser. I'm going to smile for a second. And thank you. And I want to introduce Absa, Absa who, who's a student at UW, and yeah, she came nice to me with this bill. Public, uh, uh, public admin and social work. Good. Thank you. We need you. Hurry up. Thank you. And she put this coalition together, <laughs> and they you. worked so well. Yeah, it was you worked wonderful. really hard. Thank you. She did. Glad thank to see some positive you. change. Dr. Thank, thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I look forward to your graduation. Yeah, it's in June. It's June. June, all right. Yeah. <laughs> what then? Pardon? What would you like to do then? Oh, I'm looking for jobs. Well, the state of Washington is a good place to look. We'll we got yeah. a lot of good jobs in state government. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. We could yeah. use you, so I hope you'll come talk to us. Yes, I will. Good, good. It helps address the critical nursing shortage in the state by joining the multi-state nursing licensure compact. This means more nurses with a multi-state license can practice in Washington. Reducing administrative barriers and benefiting nurses and military families who move here from a state that participates in the compact. I want to thank Senator Mullet. Uh, we're doing all we can to get more nurses here, and this is a great idea. So let's smile to have more nurses in the state of Washington. One, two, three. Again, got it. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I know. There you are. That's great. There you are. Here you go. Uh, you thank you, you very much. Yeah. I'll, be right, I'll be right back. Right. Good, 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 good. Okay, this is Senate Bill 5518. This requires WATEC, uh, the Military Department, and the Department of Commerce to fortify the state's ability to protect against uh, cybersecurity risk, whether that risk is digital or on the physical domain of the state's electrical grid. While this bill largely codifies current agency practice, this coordination will create a more holistic approach to addressing cybersecurity issues and create uh, uniform cyber uh, security policy. One of the things we're doing is to get uh, young experts 
engaged in this. And we started with, uh, is it Harrison or Garrison? Harrison. Harrison Puckett, who is going to help us on our cybersecurity, because this is the generation who really knows how to make it work. I want to thank Senator uh, uh, Binky and Representative Hackney for this excellent bill. And we'll look forward to when we can sign, sign them up. So let's smile for a second. Yeah, one, two, and three. Again. Got it. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Thank you. Appreciate good, it. Good, good seeing you. you. Thank you for uh, the new recruit. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Appreciate right. it. My bill, my bill. I need the bill. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Governor. Nice to meet you. How old? He's four, four weeks. weeks. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Wow. He's so attentive. Yes. Yes, he's heard my speeches already. This is Senate Bill 5542. This adds electrical supply equipment to the definition of commercial property. Thanks, Senator Wilson. <laughs> this is Senate Bill um, 5582. It expands nursing educational opportunities to increase nurses in our workforce in three important ways. One, it will eliminate bottlenecks in nurse training. Two, it will create new pathways in career and technical education opportunities in K-12. And three, it will design more effective community college offerings and strengthen our nursing apprenticeship programs. Thanks, Senator Coley here, who wants to bet on the Cougs. And with that, we'll smile for a second. All right. Cougs are doing a great job um, for our nursing students. It's very exciting what they're doing. Amen. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Thank nice you. to meet you. Thank you. Jay, how you doing, man? Good to see Purple here. <laughs> Jay, how are you? Hello. Good to see you. Thanks, Governor. Good to see you, Jay. How are you? How are you? Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you very no much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you so much. We are 50, uh, Senate Bill 5683. This authorizes the Department of Children, Youth, and Families to issue a child-specific foster care license to the family members or extended family members of Indian children. This includes children in the custody of a tribe or a tribe's child placing agency. This important tool helps ensure these children remain connected to their culture and in the nurturing care of their families. Thanks, Senator Kaufman, for this thoughtful bill. I'm going to smile for a second. All right, thank you. Great. Be well. Thank you. Be well. Thank you. Be well. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thoughtful bill. Appreciate thank it. You. Okay. House Bill 1013, this directs certain agencies to establish the Regional Apprenticeship Preparation Pilot Program in five locations across the state to support post-secondary success for students. This will improve the cohesion, coordination, and quality of work-integrated learning opportunities which we are expanding in the state of Washington. Thanks, Representative McCumber, and we'll smile for a second. All right, thank you, guys. Thank you. 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 Good to see you. You're going to have a... Wolf. Okay, this is House Bill 1023. This eliminates reporting requirements that our courts no longer need. Our residents will continue to be protected by the Washington Privacy Act, which restricts law enforcement from intercepting or recording private communications or conversations. Repealing this requirement will allow our overburdened courts to use their resources more efficiently, requested by the Administrator for Courts. Thanks, Representative Wayland, And let's smile for a second. All right, thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Thank you very thank you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. This House Bill 1030, this bill allows Central, Eastern, Western Washington Universities and the Evergreen State College to offer applied doctorate degrees so students can reach the highest qualification in their chosen field. This bill offers students more choice and makes degrees more accessible by offering students a broader range of degree and school options. This is known as the Wildcat, Eagle, uh, Viking, and Gooey Duck Bill. <laughs> Let's smile here. Thank you, Representative Levitt, for you. sponsorship. Thank, thank, you, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Be well. You're welcome. Be well. Thank you. you bet. Thank you, oh, thank you Governor. Thank you. Be well. Thank you, Governor. Appreciate you. Yeah, you bet. Good to see you. Two changes in how the state can present some with the medal, someone with the Medal of Valor. Uh, first, the event no longer needs to be, take place in a joint session. Two, the governor is allowed to delegate someone else to present the award if the governor can't be present due to illness or disability. This makes the process more flexible, and we recognize people for their heroic efforts. Thanks, sponsor Representative Lowe. Congratulations on your first bill. So we should see a big smile here. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, Governor. Yeah, congratulations. See you, guys. See you, guys. Yeah, see you guys. Be well. Thank you, sir. Be well. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. yeah. Brought the whole office with we'll you back. <laughs> <laughs> Ready whenever you are, Governor. This House Bill 1032, this brings agencies, utilities, and local communities together to help reduce the risk of wildfires. Among other things, this bill directs utilities to develop mitigation plans. With climate change causing more frequent and dangerous wildfires, it is in the state's interest to reduce the risk of ignition and spread of wildfire related to utility equipment. I want to thank Representative Dent and Senator Rolfus for this bill. And I'm very excited about some of the work going on in Representative Dent's district where we're developing silicon nano batteries and and uh, battery-powered airplanes and mm -hmm. great stuff going on in your neighborhood yeah, nowadays. We're doing it. Good work. Okay, let's smile for a second. One, two, and three. You one, two, and three. All right. Have you been in? Uh, I was at the uh, airport. It looks like airport yeah, there, and we saw the aviation mm -hmm. all yeah. battery mm -hmm. and the sure. and the fuel cell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you seen them? Yep. You, they're really cool. Yeah. Oh, I saw it. Stuff fly. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Well, you'll okay. get to fly one of these days. Oh yeah. Okay. We'll count on you. Thank you. <laughs> This is House Bill 1046. This raises the area median income limit for housing authority finance projects across the state by about 20 percent so that more housing can be built for low income individuals. Going forward, more housing can be built for people who make up to 80 percent of the area median income. This will help provide more housing options for community workers such as teachers, social workers, and service workers. As the backbone of our communities, these individuals will benefit from greater access to new and affordable housing. Thanks, Representative Whalen. All right, thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Good to see. Yeah, Thanks so much. very nice. Good right. to help people. Thank you. You're welcome. Ready whenever you are, Governor. That's how it works. This House Bill 1073, this allows medical assistants to continue practices that they performed during the COVID-19 pandemic and requires them to complete and maintain their ongoing training and education to keep up with these services. This bill will benefit all Washingtonians by maintaining increased access to vaccines and certain tests, with many of them related to COVID-19. Thanks, Representative Harris. And I think Senator Dingra was involved in Absolutely. this as well. <laughs> so let's smile for a second here. All right, thank you. Paul, good to see you. Good to see you. I feel badly that I haven't got to hear you sing this session. But <laughs> she's, a, she's a constituent on uh, one who brought parts of the oh, bill. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for your work. Yeah, thank thank you for bringing it. How are you doing? Doing well. Thank you for helping us move the needle. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So you know, you know, everybody's going to be well in your care. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Good to see you. Ready whenever you are. This house bill. This is House Bill 1085. This House Bill decreases plastic pollution in three ways. One, by restricting single-use plastic packaging in hotels and motels. Two, by requiring water bottle, re water bottle refilling stations to be built next to new drinking fountains in new construction design. And three, by reducing pollution from foam-filled floats. That's right foam-filled floats, and docks in certain structures. This kind of foam contains harmful chemicals that leach into the water and are dangerous to wildlife. These new rules will help reduce the amount of plastic that is contaminating our shorelines and impacting wildlife. The bill does not remove, however, the most famous line from the movie, The Graduate. With that, I want to thank Representative Venna for her tremendous leadership on this. Big bill. Okay, let's smile for a second. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Gavin. Really Great. appreciate it. Did I send you a picture of your pitch? I did. Didn't I? No. Did you I have one for you, though. I'll send it no. to you. You sure no. I didn't? You did not. I will do it again. <laughs> okay. Wait, who I did you send one. it to? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who I sent it to. I, I meant to send it to you. <laughs> Some random person. You are ready. How are you? Hey. Good, right. to Good to see you. Good to see you. That's what happens when you get okay, a this is doing. House Bill 1122. This gives Washington management service members the fundamental right to organize and collectively bargain. These workers provided a valuable service to our state and deserve this right. Thanks to sponsor Representative Olio, and congratulations on your first bill since being back in the legislature. We'd love to see your return. And thanks to companion bill sponsor, Senator Hunt. And with that, let's smile here. Here we go. One, two, three. And again, one, two, and Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah, First bill back. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you? Nice good, to see you. Good. 
Good to see you. You should have been good in bill. this. <laughs> yeah. we have one? Yeah. I have one here. Yeah. Okay, this is House Bill 1171. This expands the membership of and requirements for the Motorcycle Safety Education Advisory Board, which advises the Department of Licensing on motorcycle safety. Requiring all board members to be endorsed motorcycle riders means experienced riders are advising us on motorcycle safety issues. And if the group ever needs advice, uh, you'll recall my days on a Yamaha 125. Boy, those were great days. I want to thank Representative Mossbrooker for her leadership and uh, having one of the finest inns in the state of Washington and Goldendale for both things. So let's smile for a second. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be well. Be well. All right, Governor. Be well. Thanks, guys. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. You ever been on a Yamaha 125? <laughs> Not recently, but that's okay. It sounds like a sewing machine. <laughs> good to see you. It's good to chat with you again. It's yes, been a while. Yes, good to see you again. Yeah. Yeah. Glad you're so when are you going to get back into riding? <laughs> well, I, I do ride a bike, but it's ones that I pedal on. That's pedal where I pedal on. Yeah, yeah, you never know. But you never know when I'll be. Ready whenever you are, Governor. You like cupcakes and unicorns? <laughs> Okay, well, cupcake I tell you what, you might earn a cupcake. We'll see here. <laughs> this is House Bill 1204. This keeps the Family Connections Program a part of the state's child welfare system going forward. This program supports parents and assigned caregivers as they participated in a facilitated conversation about the child's needs and how to best meet those needs when a child enters foster care. Making this program permanent will reduce trauma for children in foster care. The Department of Children, Youth, and Families requested this bill. I want to thank sponsor, Representative Callan, Senator Kaufman, and Azalea here, who is going to help us get this bill through here. So I am going to sign this bill. And Azalea, can you smile for this man up here? There we go. All right, thank you. Nice. Thank you, guys. Nice. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks for bringing talent here. Oh, yes. Yes. Can we get her a cupcake? I think there's one in my office. One in your office? Yeah. Okay. Can we get her a cupcake? Yeah. Is that just a get her, if you got a unicorn, give her a unicorn, go, sir, too. Go see the cupcake. Yeah, we're going to go grab that. Thanks, Governor. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, this is House Bill 1237. It changes how the state uses funds generated from vehicle identification number inspections. Going forward, all the funds will support the Washington State Patrol investing in things such as trooper training and activities that help troopers patrol our roadways. This means your dollars will go to the entity that's doing the work. Thanks, Representative uh, Robertson. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Governor. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Be well. Be well. <clears throat> Ready this House Bill uh, 1251, it requires public water systems to notify water customers about their intent to start or end fluoride use in the water system, giving customers important information about their water. Fluoride is a natural mineral that helps prevent tooth decay and providing it can help prevent health inequities, particularly for our children. Thanks to sponsor Representative Tonier and thanks to Companion Bill Senator Robinson. And we'll smile with our teeth that have been preserved by <laughs> fluoride. Okay, great. Thank you, guys. Where did you go here? I'm right here. Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Thank you very much. Governor. Thank you for the thoughtful bill. Thank, Thank you. you. Good to see you. Yeah, Good to see you. Too. Jay, how are you? Thank you, Governor. Thanks for being here. I Thank am you. a good friend of the Schwaggers. That's I okay. told them I was coming, <laughs> coming to see you today. Stacy Donovan. And what brings you here? I work on fluoride, so I got Thank Steve you. and Christine who involved. Do you, who do you work with? This is House Bill 1255. This bill will help nurses who have a substance use disorder and a suspended license participate in substance use disorder treatment and monitoring to regain their license. The stipend program will ensure that nurses have funds to participate in the program. This will help people in, critical, in a critical workforce shortage area receive needed treatment and continue working in the nursing profession. I want to thank the prime sponsor, Representative Simmons, for her leadership and helping people get back on their feet and back in the profession. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. I'll tell Trudy you said she's your favorite. I will. <laughs> yes, thank you yes, so I much. Will tell her. Thank you. She knows that already. Okay, good. <laughs> yep. Thank you.
Okay. This House Bill 1259, this bill enables the Secretary of State's Chief of Staff to act on the Secretary's behalf. The bill does not create a new position, it simply adds the Chief of Staff to the list of individuals who have the authority to sign on the Secretary's behalf. I vetoed the emergency clause section in Section 2 is not necessary. The Secretary of State's office requested the bill. Thanks, Represent Arbarno. Ar Thank you. And I'm happy to sign this bill and we'll smile for a second. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Jay, how are you? I'm Dina. Hello, what's your name? Dina. Hi, Dina. Nice to meet you. Nice Where are you from? Vancouver. It's a nice place. Oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you stay here. I will. You never move to California. Or, oh, no, I love Washington. Well, especially in Oregon. Oh, no. No. <laughs> how are you? A pleasure to meet you. Good to see you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Ready whenever you want to go. This is House Bill 1275. This allows athletic trainers to expand the population they can treat when someone gets an athletic injury during health and wellness activities associated with certain organizations. This bill also lets athletic trainers with proper training administer over-the-counter medication. These actions will help non-traditional athletes in non-traditional athletic settings access medical expertise when they need it. Thanks, Representative Ty, Ty and uh, Senator Cleveland for working on this bill, and I'm happy to sign it. I hope nobody gets hurt. Okay, let's <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Thank, you so Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you, Governor. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for caring for our athletes. Absolutely. Period. Can we do pens for everybody? You bet. Ready whenever you want, This is House Bill 1311. This bill requires businesses that provide credit repair services to get a written authorization from a consumer before they can communicate with a consumer reporting agency, credit or collection agency. It also places other conditions on how credit repair services interact with consumers to ensure Washingtonians are adequately protected. Thanks, Representative Reeves, and I'm signing this bill. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, team. Good job. Thank you, Governor. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. you. Thank you. I'm going to grab one. That's all right. Yeah, Drew's got them all set up. Drew's the pen guy, man. Okay, we are ready. We are here for House Bill 1323. This establishes a training and certification program for individuals and contractors who apply fire resistant material in buildings. A regulated training helps ensure they follow consistent training standards that aim to keep our homes and families safe from fire. We have an expert in this, Representative Bernoski, who sponsored this, and Senator Vandeway. Thank you very much. And let's smile for a second. All right, thank you. All right, thanks. Thank Appreciate it. it. Good to see you. Appreciate it. Good, Good to see you. See you. Yeah. Thanks a lot, yeah. man. Good to see you. Yeah. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. This is House Bill 1334, which allows local transit authorities to seek no-cost easements for ferry terminals and facilities on state land. This bill recognizes the important role of local transit in our state's ferry system, extending public land use privileges that state transit enjoys to local authorities. I want to thank Representative Hudgens and Senator Randall and everybody else working on that, and uh, particularly uh, uh, Kitsap. Uh, transit for their really far-sighted work they're doing in decarbonizing our transportation system. Okay, let's smile here. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Appreciate it. Yeah. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good to see you, man. Thanks for your thanks for your visionary leadership. And they rescued all our Washington State ferry passengers. This Governor, weekend. I know. I forgot to say that. Hey, hey. Oh, thank hey uh, where did they get the This is House Bill 1355. It adjusts the property tax exemption for Washington senior citizens, veterans, and individuals with disabilities by increasing the qualifying income thresholds. This will help people stay in their homes and maintain stable housing. I want to thank Representative Wiley. And the smile for a second. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. Take care. Thanks, Gov. Appreciate it. Go Rams. Rams. Go Rams. I talked to our old coach, Milray, uh, last week. Thank you guys. He's 101, I think. Oh, my God, really? Totally with it. Yeah. Totally with it. Can't say I'm surprised. The guy's amazing. Isn't he? he really is amazing. Great yeah, Rams you. never age. You know? No, they don't. Thank God. <laughs> this House Bill 1361, it makes our salary and employment system more efficient in three ways. One, it cleans up obsolete language we no longer need. 
Two, all new state workers will receive their paycheck electronically instead of as a paper check. And three, state employees who are involved in certain workplace investigations can't transfer to another position until it's resolved. These changes will improve the efficiency of state government. The Office of Financial Management requested this bill. Thanks, Representative Arno, for getting it through. And a smile for a sec. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good to see you. You will. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Don't, don't spend it all in place. Okay. This is House Bill 1370. This establishes the Whistleblower Award and Protection Act, giving the Department of Financial Institutions the authority to give monetary awards to whistleblowers who report state or federal fraud violations. Modeled after the North American Securities Administrators Association legislation, this bill provides incentives and protections for individuals who want to report wrongdoing. The Department of Financial Institutions requested this bill. Thanks to Representative Rees for shepherding it through. Thank you. Good job, guys. Thank, Thank you. you, Governor. Yeah, Pleasure. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Enjoy the day. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Wait a minute, this House Bill 1394, this eliminates the need for certain juvenile offenders to register as sex offenders. For those who must register, the registration period is limited to two or three years. This bill creates a grant program to help families pay for young offenders to receive evaluation and treatment. And it helps make treatment more accessible by expanding the types of behavioral health professionals who can provide it. Sponsored by Representative Sen and Senator Frame. Senator Bill, walk you up Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you. Be thank well. Thank you so much. Be well. You're welcome. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> thank you. This House Bill 1406, it extends the time that unaccompanied homeless youth can access shelter facilities and services. It also allows youth to consent on their own to remain in safe licensed facilities when parents can't be located or aren't available to provide consent. This additional time will help keep vulnerable youth off the streets while shelter staff, community support teams, and the Department of Children, Youth, and Families provide outreach and offer voluntary re reconciliation services to the families. I'm sponsored by Representative Cortez. And with that, I'm signing this bill. All right, thank you. Yeah, you welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Take care of all those young people. Thank you very much. Take care of those young folks. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Well. Yeah, take care of them. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Be well. Good to see you. Did you get a pen? I did. I'm this House, House Bill 1501, this allows family members of homicide victims to receive more than 12 counseling sessions under the Crime Victims Compensation Program. This bill offers family members crucial mental health tools to get through a difficult time, sponsored by Representative Steele. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Be well. Take care. Thank you. Be well. Thank you, Governor. Be well. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. Thank you. House Bill 1577, this gives small cities and towns more flexibilities when hiring municipal officers who can do contract work. Many small towns have few contractors to choose from, making some projects more difficult to put into motion. This bill removes unnecessary limitations and bumps up the allowable contract value which hasn't been increased in more than 20 years when there is a beneficial interest. Uh, sponsored by Representative Schmick. Okay. All right. Say hello to everybody. I will. Okay. Thank Be well. you. Be well. Thank you. 1658. This bill permits public high school students 16 years and older to get high school credit for work experience. Students must describe how the paid work experience helps them develop knowledge and skills in basic education as well as in personal finance and careers. This bill encourages students to gain valuable work experience and does not penalize them if they must work to help support their families. We know that these experiences are incredibly valuable. Thanks, Representative Shavers, for seeing this bill through. All right, thank you. Thanks, thank you so much. Thank Be well. You. Yeah. First you. Yeah, it's good to see you. We got all kinds of pens here. <laughs> pens we got. Oh. Okay. So nice to see you. Yes. Nice to see you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Oh. Governor? Okay. Thanks for representative Kloba. 
Okay. Oh, okay. Yes, you House are. Bill 1712, it helps displace workers who lost their jobs because of fin fish operations shutting down. The law offers these workers additional training benefits to help them find new jobs in other industries, keeping our workforce and economy strong. Uh, uh, Prime Sponsor Representative Schmick and Companion Bill Senator Mazal got this thing to go through. Hey, yep. good to see you. Good to see you again. This House Bill 1728, it directs the military department's emergency management division to develop and administer a disaster resilience program. This program will coordinate state and local disaster resilience and response activities and help identify and fill critical gaps in our current disaster resilience efforts. This will help uh, prepare Washingtonians for disasters and help us respond more effectively when they happen. Thanks, Representative Donahue. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cindy. Oh, yeah. You got a pen. Thank you very much. I forgot about the pen. I got my hands No pockets. Great. Ready whenever you are. This is House Bill 1730. It will make COVID 19 holdover requirements permanent for businesses in the hospitality industry by allowing a liquor licensee to employ an individual who is at least 18 years old as long as they don't perform services related to the sale or service of alcohol. This will help the hospitality industry fill positions in a safe and responsible manner. However, I will veto emergency clause section in section 13. Uh, thanks to Representative Waters. Congratulations uh, on your first bill and a particular congratulations to your parents who you owe everything to. And you should tell <laughs> I them do, that. I do. Okay. You, you should tell them that regularly, especially your mother. Okay, let's smile for a second. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. This House Bill 1763, this provides conditional scholarships to help more people become behavioral health counselors. This not only increases the number of people who can enter this field, but it will build a diverse workforce by bringing in people from rural areas and people of color. By removing some of the barriers that have kept individuals from receiving these conditional scholarships, we will start to see more well-trained providers serving the people of Washington. I want to thank Representative Eslick for getting this bill to my desk. Thank you very much, Governor, for signing. Okay. Yes, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Are, this is uh, House Bill 1792. This bill improves the public process for adjudicating water rights, which will give water users in the Nooksack Basin more certainty on who can claim access to these rights. This information will help resolve conflicts about the water supply and help the state and water users manage water for cities, tribes, farms, and fish. Uh, I want to note a particular conversation I had with the sponsor, Representative Timmons, a while back. He used to work with the executive branch of the state government. And he came to me and said he was considering running for the Washington State Legislature. And I told him that I just did not conceive that he would actually be productive in, <laughs> in that role. And he said, Governor, with all due respect, someday I will be here with one of the best water rights bills in the history of the state of Washington, and you are going to sign it. And he was right. So I'm going to sign this bill. And I appreciate his first bill of many that he will have for the people of the state of Washington. So let's smile. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. I really Thank appreciate it. Good to see you. It. Thanks, Governor. Good to see you. Good to see you. Can I get a picture? Of this yeah, service? absolutely. This is 17... Who is pretending, Gov? 1707. 1707. Yeah. Thank you, Aaron. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Appreciate it. Let me get you here. Here you are. Okay. Thanks, Governor. Yeah, they said you had an easy question. Are you similarly disposed to sign the bill that protects transgender youth and seeking reproductive services and then move it in the homeless shelters? Well, what it, yes, because what it, it, it's a, it's a sheltering bill that simply allows them to continue in a shelter 
and it provides, uh, in some sense, a surrogate because it has a Department of Children's Services to make sure that decisions are made appropriately. It also has a provision that they will, uh, where appropriate, contact the parents. So I think that that has some uh, good safeguards in it. Uh, so we still have somebody making good decisions for the child. So I'm inclined to sign it. Anything else? Yeah. Governor, just a quick update on the budgets and REIT. What have you heard? I'm hearing that REIT may not be moving forward, and then the transportation budgets come out. You had some criticism. Any insights on those two? Well, I think in the some of my concerns will be uh, allayed by some provisos in the budget to make sure that we have a mechanism for prioritizing uh, projects if, in fact, uh, the, you know, we had to because of rising costs or inadequate financing. So I think those will be in a, handled in a proviso. Uh, I haven't heard any new news in the last 24 hours about REIT, so I don't have any more information to tell you one way or another. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy.